Hey there. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. Um, it's 8.30 and I, I'm, I'm prompt. <laughs> um, so my name's Bob Bickle. Thanks everybody for coming. Um, and for those of those who, of you who uh, came last night, thanks a lot. Um, uh, it, was, it turned out to be not too bad weather. It, it, Big thunderstorm kind of blew through and, and it cooled it down and it wasn't so bad last night. And it wound up being a nice, nice facility. Um, so, uh, so thanks a lot for coming. This is our uh, third year of doing this thing. Um, and, uh, and so we've expanded it a little bit because more people are interested in what we're doing. Um, this year, if you look at your agendas, which you probably got in your thing, we're gonna actually have two uh, tracks. The one on the, on the on, Let's see, the left <laughs> is going to be in this room. Um, and that's really going to be um, basically people who use our technology, but are race directors or timers or race management people that are going to talk about how they run and operate their races and basically share some of their best practices and so forth. And then um, on this side is going to be run sign up tutorials. So last year we had a number of people that were asking us for uh, run sign up tutorials. You might want to turn the volume down a little bit because we're getting a little feedback or, or something for the speaker on the other side. There you go. Um, so, um, so uh, and that's going to be upstairs. So it's just on the second floor. And basically, we've got a 10 minute break after I talk to people to shuffle wherever you want to go. And we've tried to align things kind of at different times. So like next, um, Barbara is going to talk about donations and fundraising down here. But the, the kind of tutorial run sign up training session upstairs on donations and fundraising is going to be later in the day. So you'll be able to kind of swap back and forth to depending on what your primary interests are. The other thing that we're doing, and um, Matt and Andrew, are we actually doing this? Are we streaming live? Wow. So we're actually streaming this live on YouTube. Um, we should probably tell people. Um, <laughs> um, well, there's one person watching. All right, that's pretty good. Um, and and uh, we played around a little bit with Facebook Live. I don't know if you saw any of those, but um, we're doing YouTube Live because with YouTube Live you can feed more complicated programs into it. And so Andrew um, Sigward over there is sitting. And at his computer, he's actually controlling like a couple of uh, video cameras, one uh, looking at me apparently behind, uh, uh, behind uh, the Vortex, and uh, one over there looking at you guys, and then one like looking at the screen and stuff like that, and he can switch back and forth. And that all happens live. And as soon as it's over, it gets saved to YouTube and people can view it. And so it's going to become a resource. So hopefully some people say some useful things um, after I'm done. <laughs> um, so uh, so that's, the, um, that's the session. And it appears that my daughter is uh, chatting with me. Um, so, so my daughter, my older daughter lives in uh, Liberia. And, um, and she's very good at English, and I'm not. And, um, and so um, she uh, makes fun of my blogs that I put up. And I gave her access to edit the blog that I posted this morning because she was saying I, I misspelled it and stuff like that. Actually, actually, this is a picture of her and me when she lived in uh, Tanzania. Um, uh, and she taught in a, uh, a school there. But anyway, um, so. Uh, uh, a funny thing happened last night while we were, well, we were at, the, um, at the reception. Um, Active was scraping our screen again. I don't know, how, how many people of you saw, saw the blogs that we wrote uh, last week? Oh, good. Um, <laughs> so, so last week, Active um, was running a program that does scraping, and they were trying to find all the races that are listed on our site and, like, their locations and stuff, and probably trying to figure out, like, you know, like, the races in Georgia and assign them to the sales rep in Georgia to go after and win them, win them back from run sign up. And, um, and so it triggered some of our kind of alerts in our system. And so we actually turned off their IP address. And so that meant that everybody at Active Headquarters could not access the run sign up site anymore. And so one sales rep is going to a run sign up race and he's like, run sign ups down. 
And then the next sales rep's like, run Sam's down, run Sam's down. And they probably have this sales pit there. And so it goes mad. And I actually, um, some of you guys sent us copies of the emails you got from Active saying, run signups down, we can help you uh, immediately. And, um, and uh, uh, it was actually, I have copies of emails from six different sales reps at Active. So they have a lot of sales reps that are really interested in your business. And, uh, and so, so, um, so I, I called up Active and sent them a nasty email and I wrote, I wrote a blog kind of detailing what, what it was and stuff like that. And uh, Nick Bodkins, who runs the IPCO business there, was very nice and, and um, you know, he, he apologized and said they'd take care of communicating with all the, all the, all the companies that they had uh, misinformed about us being down. Um, cause knock on wood, we have not been down this year. And, um, I, and, and so I thought story was over. We turned back on their IP address. Um, and last night they were screaming, scraping us again. And we let them go for a while. Um, I guess Steven and Rich thought, oh, it'd be more interesting to see what they're really interested in. What they're doing is they're going to a race and then they're kind of drilling down into the race. And you know how there's like a find a participant um, page, and they're they're like uh, going through the find a participant page, try to figure out like how many people are in in each race, and you know so they can target the bigger races and stuff. Um, and so I wrote a blog about that this morning. I sent them another nasty email this morning, and <laughs> so it, and when I wrote the blog, I. Uh, my grammar wasn't good and my spelling wasn't good, and so my daughter anyway corrected me. Um, so uh, yesterday we had a, cus a customer advisory board meeting. So um, uh, you know, uh, Run Sign Up is very into this uh, kind of thing that there's we're like a three-legged stool. So employees, owners, which happens to be me, and um, and and customers. And if any one of those is off kilter, then you've got an unbalanced system. And so as part of trying to give a voice, uh, an increasing voice to customers, we have a customer advisory board. And we have about 10 people on it, 10 races. And what we're going to be doing is rotating that. So it'll be a two-year stint. And, you, and we'll, we'll kind of rotate half the people off every year and then have a new people, new people come on. So if you're interested in being a part of that, we would appreciate you, uh, you know, talking to me or talking to uh, the people that you work with at, at Run Sign Up. And, um, and as, as time goes on, we'll make that more and more formal. Um, one of the things we introduced this year, um, and here's a list of, of the folks um, who are, uh, are part of the customer advisory board, and thank you, thank you very much for, for being a part of that. So one of the things um, that we did this year is we started what's called a community grant program. So one sign up is actually going to be a pretty profitable company because we, we run a decent business efficiently and stuff and we're at that critical mass now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to carve off um, part of the profits each year. We have an employee profit sharing program, so think of this as like a community profit sharing program, if you will, and hopefully it'll get much larger as time goes on. Um, we had over, uh, no, we had near 100 submissions for ideas of things to, to give money to. And the basic concept is we want to give money not to one of your race's charities like you know Heart Association or Cancer or something like that. What we want to do is give it to some organization that is um, either promoting running or um, utilizing running to promote some sort of lifestyle change that's, uh, that's positive. And so um, we kind of whittled those down to 11, and then yesterday the customer advisory board voted, and um, uh, and uh, you know more money. Those people got more votes basically yesterday. So um, so Ansley's Angels, Back on My Feet, Students Run Philly Style, Healthy Kids Running Series, and Wings of America all uh, are going to be receiving grants. Um, there's a blog post out um, this morning. If you have one, to, you can click a link and you can find out more about those organizations. They're all really, really good. Um, we had a lot of really, you know, there's a lot of good organizations out there. Um, and probably most of you are representing really wonderful organizations that are, you know, trying to, trying to you know, really uh, give back in some sort of way. But, but this is our kind of small attempt at that. 
Um, so Run Sign Up was founded with this philosophy that um, the running and endurance community is made up of tens of thousands of micro communities. So it might be a running store, it might be a triathlon, it might be a timer, um, it might be a race management company or whatever, um, might be a running club, and uh, none of them are at critical mass to be able to afford to do technology well. And, um, and my background is, is technology companies, and, and I love technology, and I love running, and so that was kind of the genesis of the idea of trying to create this. And I was lucky enough to uh, run into this wonderful young man, Stephen Sigwert, um, about seven years ago, and um, Stephen is really the foundation of Run Sign Up. Um, he's sitting in the back of the room, and, and he's, uh, he's uh, uh, incredibly modest, but, but he, if there's a reason for Run Sign Up, um, Steven Sigward is the, the reason for Run Sign Up, so let's give him a round of applause. <clears throat> but, but what we've done is, is um, you know, others have joined Steven, and uh, we built a really strong technology platform. We know how to build technology well, and then we've hired a bunch of people that work with you all, um, you know, people like uh, Jordan or Brian, um, you know, Megan, Natalie, just everybody, and all of them are kind of into this business, like we like dealing with this type of thing, and what we're doing is we're taking all that input from, from you all and trying to crystallize it into technology that you all can use, um, and, and we do that Try to do that on an open platform where we don't own the data, you own the data. Um, we're just like, think of us as the raw technology that you can make use however you want to and pick and choose whatever pieces you want um, that would help you in your running communities. The other thing that we've done that's kind of interesting is we've kind of created these linkages between the micro communities. So we've made it really easy for timers and races to kind of communicate you know, with, you know, here's my participant data, oh, here's result data, and, and, and tie that together very easily. We've made it good for, like, clubs and races to, to interact easily and, and stuff like that. Um, so that's the philosophy. Um, so we started in, in 2010 as the official start of, of Run Sign Up, and we've grown really fast, as the little chart um, shows. Um, so last year we had over 10,000 races use us for uh, registration, and we had 2.7 million paid registrations. This year it's going to be between 14 and 15,000 races, and about between 4.3 and 4.4 million registrations, paid registrations on our platform, which is just incredible. And you know what's happened over the past couple of years is we've kind of broken in. Um, I, I, is Katie here? So Pittsburgh Marathon was like our first like super big race that like took a shot and like Katie, I thank you uh, because you know you you trusted us um, and and we take that stuff very seriously and like it's uh, you know when people like Pittsburgh or or um, you know anybody kind of trusts us and our technology what we build. I'll tell you, it makes it worthwhile. Like that's what we're in this for, is to feel proud about what we do and, and to like what we do and to feel good. And, and like last night was really nice. So many of you came up and, and said thanks for, for what, 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 what we're providing. So um, that was really great. Um, we've probably got over 300 clubs that use our club management system. Um, we've got hundreds of timers. Um, you know, Roger's race director uh, business has uh, uh, over 500 timers that use race director. Um, so we've got we've got a major kind of footprint in in a lot of in a lot of places. So, you know, run sign up as the name kind of signifies, kind of started up with this idea of we'll help do registration. But the reality is is that what we want to try to do, and because we've gotten bigger, kind of our ambitions, we can do more. And so this is a visualization of, of what we want to do. Um, and, and basically to, to help you with your life cycle. 
And technology is involved in each one of these areas. And so while we started in registration, you can see, you know, like the number of promotional tools that we've been adding and the number of race day tools. I mean, with, with Roger and James joining us with Race Director and, and Race Joy, that was a pretty major signal last year, you know, that we were willing to spend money and make investments in, in uh, interesting technology for race day. And um, you know what you're going to see over the next year, and I'll, I'll explain here, is that um, that's just going to grow and increase in nature. And all that stuff kind of ties together um, pretty nicely. So um, kind of the quick year in review, um, uh, the thing down at the bottom is really the, the best. Um, so the two bullet points at the bottom. So we have lots of features that we put out. And, and we're kind of known for putting out a lot, a lot of features. And people always say to us, slow down, slow down. And we're not going to slow down. Um, uh, but, but fundamentally, what we are is a platform that processes money for you. Right? And so we need to make sure that that is like the rock solid base. So we don't want to introduce a fancy feature to ruin the, the underlying purpose of what we're trying to do for you. So uh, last year, we had eight minutes of total downtime. All of it was planned, meaning that we put a little notice on the website and said, you may see a two minute delay. We never really like, inter like people never needed to go back to the beginning to restart registration or something like that. They just saw a couple minute delay, typically. Um, and then um, uh, this year, again, knock on wood, we've had, we've had zero. Um, at, you know, we've, we've been lucky. Uh, part lucky and part we invest a lot trying to make the system um, reliable and fault tolerant and stuff. Um, the other thing is that we had one day where some of our customers were delayed by one day in their payments. People that get daily payments were delayed by a day. Um, but other than that, the, the platform is pretty solid. And then the line above that is the thing that's truly amazing. That it, it's actually the actual number over the past 12 months is 2,740 releases of our software. You know how you used to have, you know, like Windows 3.1 and Windows 3.2 or Windows 98 and stuff? Um, we are doing releases continuously, um, and, um, and it, it's, we have this system built that we can make these tiny micro releases, and you guys don't even notice. Between clicks, the system has been upgrade, upgraded, and um, what it allows us to do is to keep this one system that is you know, vibrant and, and current and um, and, and it gives us a single system that we can support across all of our very, very diverse customers. Um, so the year in review was, was, we did a lot. We did a lot of really good things. Um, to me, I'm probably proudest of the thing that we kind of announced last year at this session, which was, was, what, which was the free race websites. Um, the race websites are really good looking and they're really, you know, kind of, you know, kind of put together such that they have a fair amount of power to them, but not so much that you know, we get a ton of, of support or they're not overwhelming. So it's not a full WordPress Drupal type of a system, but it's good enough for 99% you know, you know, of races. And we've taken that same technology and given it to clubs and given it to partners. And if you're a timer uh, type of a partner, I would really encourage you to look at, um, at what we have on the partner website capability. Um, I'd say, again, like 95% of the time, it's going to be better than what you have currently. <laughs> um, uh, you, can, you can look at my personal blog is actually running as a partner website, bobbickle.com. I moved it over um, as part of our testing um, and, and giving suggestions to Ryan and stuff like that when he was building it. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff that you can hear about today. Um, uh, uh, let's see. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go into the future stuff so that we keep on uh, track and time. So when when we're thinking about this, you know that 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 virtuous cycle of promotion and registration and race day and stuff like that. This is how we're starting to kind of break down the tools and um, think about things. And, and we think about you know, how can we improve each of these buckets you know, over time and, and make, them, make them better. Um, and so, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about promotion and race day in particular now. 
Um, I'm going to talk in the promotion area, I'm going to talk about a couple things that we've done, and then I'm going to talk about kind of our strategy for where we're heading on promotion. So um, how many people here know about uh, referral rewards? A few, good, good. Um, so what referral rewards is uh, today is um, when somebody signs up, say I sign up for a race, I get a little Facebook pop up at the end and I share that with my friends. That link that I'm sharing with my friends actually has a referral code identifying me, me in it. So when my friend comes and signs up for that race from that Facebook share, or if I send them an email from the little link I get in the confirmation, um, our system's keeping track of those referrals. And we count them and stuff like that. So and we've done that for a long time. But now what we've done is we've, we've given you a mechanism set rules on giving rewards back to the customer based upon referrals. So you could set a reward, and the most successful one I've seen is for a race that says if you get five referred friends, if you refer five friends, you actually get your registration fee back, right? If you think about it, that's a pretty, pretty good deal because um, if I can only get four friends, I don't get anything back and it doesn't cost the race anything. If I get five friends, well, what race wouldn't like to have you know, five, five of my friends? Um, <laughs> um, so, um, so it turns out that the stats are pretty astounding. And one of the things that we, we really aspire to you know, with this whole promotion side is you know, we chart, the way we make money is off processing fees, right? What we want to do is we want to get to a point that um, we get you so many race, extra race registrations that it totally offsets the processing fee. So if the processing fee is 6%, we've kind of done that with referral rewards. Um, because if you look at all the referral rewards for the past month, um, uh, it's 6% of, um, of the registration volume and 7% of the transaction dollar volume has actually come from referrals. Um, and the ROI on that is 1,400%, meaning that people have spent $17,000 to get $236,000 of registration fees. That's a pretty good deal, right? And so there's the 6%. Some companies that are more aggressive with it, you know, like that registration fee back, they, they do better. They, they're like at, at 10, 12, some of them are at 14%. Um, what we also did is we, when we came out with this, we improved the Facebook share. So now it's easier to like customize the Facebook message, um, which really will increase your traffic. Um, uh, Natalie said one of her customers, you know, they did refund rewards and they moved, you know, from, um, you know, like 1% up to like 9%, and then when they did the Facebook share uh, correctly, it moved it up to like 12 to 14%. So there's some things that we've put in place that make real uh, differences. One of the things we're going to be releasing later this year is not only refund rewards, but add-on rewards. So think of the idea that, you know, you go to the running store or ASICS and they give you, a, you know, a bunch of pairs of socks, right? So you could say anybody that gets three referral rewards or more is going to get a free pair of socks. We keep track of that, right? As soon as that person gets three refund, three referrals, they're going to um, they're they're going to they're going to get tagged in the system, and they'll get a free add-on of a pair of socks. And then when you use the check-in app to check them in dynamically with your and hand them their bib, you can see oh you've qualified for a free pair of socks. Here's a pair of socks. So. Pretty cool stuff, um, and and you know that's kind of our goal with this whole promotional thing is how can we impact you know your registrations and make it better. So the second thing we've released is we've taken our email system and we added some automated tools to it. Um, uh, uh, the one that is out currently that can impact your business is incomplete registrations. So if somebody goes through and they start to sign up but then they don't complete. Um, we can automatically send them, um, you know, an email afterwards. And you could do things like include coupons and try to bring them back and, and stuff like that. It's completely up to you, but you set it once and then forget. So the idea is set and forget. <laughs> um, the, the second one that uh, Andrew's going to be releasing hopefully later this week <clears throat> is price increase. 
So I've got a price increase that's happened on July 31st. The system automatically, two days before, or at your control, whatever, um, sends an email to everybody from last year's participants and this year's participants. And it doesn't send one email, it sends two emails. It's smart enough to know who's registered and who hasn't. So if you've registered, say, hey, congratulations for signing up before the price increase. Make sure to share with your friends. Here's your referral link. And remember, if you get you know, five referrers, you get a pair of socks. And, um, and then people that haven't signed up yet sends a regular you know, uh, kind of email. Um, so the vision of where we're heading on promotion, um, and we've just hired a, another developer to help us focus on this more, uh, Matt Morrison, um, <clears throat> is to create like a marketing promotion dashboard and um, that gives you a view of things and gives you control of things. So think of a dashboard with like number of registrations, but think of it also related to um, uh, sources. So, you know, where did things come from, like Facebook or Google searches or, you know, the running store newsletter or something like that, and, um, and events. So coupons, um, price increases, an email, uh, response and stuff like that. And so that's going to be the high level thing. And underneath, we're basically building, going to be building Google Analytics for run sign up. So today, one of the common complaints of our email marketing is that you don't have enough stats and stuff like that. And the reason we haven't really focused on that is that we have this vision of how we're going to do it. It's going to require us to do a bunch of plumbing work that's you know pretty hard to do. Uh, but once we have that in place, it will tie into everything else, right? So um, you'll have this, this uh, wonderful way of, of, of figuring out you know, um, you know, where, where your sources are coming from. And then eventually what we want to be is we want to be an automated advertising agency. What that means is that, <clears throat> say you've got that price increase coming up on July 31st, in addition to sending an email, Maybe you save a little pot of money, maybe three bucks out of each registration into a marketing pot of money, and we automatically turn on a Facebook ad for you two days before your price increase, saying, hey, get, get it out. And because we um, can monitor stuff kind of in real time, we can measure the return on ad spend. If it's, if it's trending bad, turn the ad off. It's a waste of money. If it's going well, then, then um, continue to plow money into it. And we'll give you kind of um, uh, uh, tools to be able to manage this stuff. So um, um, <clears throat> this, I'll, I'll introduce this concept now, and I'll reinforce it later. So we think that, um, that races, individual races, don't have the resources to do a bunch of stuff, right? Because they just don't have the time or energy or inclination or the expertise. <clears throat> and so we're trying to create a bunch of automated tools we can kind of just flip a button and things will kind of work. Um, but what we also see is a really good opportunity to take these tools for our partners and, um, and really customize it and offer value-added services. So um, like a lot of timers today, the basis of your relationship with your customer is providing chip-based results. We think that that's going to change. We think that in the future, as a timer race manager, <clears throat> you have the opportunity to add more value. You have the opportunity to try to increase their participants by customizing the promotional tools that Run is going to be giving you to drive more, more registrations. Um, and utilizing some of our race day tools that I'm about to, to introduce to provide a better experience on, on, on race day. So, um, race day go. <clears throat> so this is actually a really big strategic announcement. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so we are um, basically rebranding all of our race day products to be under this new brand, race day go. Um, so over the coming months, you'll see the dashboards change. You'll see a new timer um, type of dashboard that is race day go um, that will centralize all of your race day oriented types of types of things and tasks and so forth 
Um, and uh, the idea of having it be a separate brand is to make it independent from sign up. So if you're a timer, which is the primary market for, for this uh, set of products, um, if you're a timer, you cannot force the sign up vendor on, on all of your customers, right? So you need to have an open platform. You need to have an open platform that works with you know, lots of different timing equipment. You need an open platform that works with lots of different registration systems. You need a platform that works with different results systems. Um, and something that you can kind of pull, plug and play, um, because your environment's not going to be totally like anybody else's environment, right? So what we're doing is creating this overall platform, Race Day Go, with a bunch of plug and play pieces. You can pick any of these pieces, one of these pieces, um, any combination, and, and utilize them. Um, so um, the concept is that it's going to be a family of offering. It's going to be very low cost or free. So this is a money loser for us, right? <laughs> um, and the hope is that we'll make it up in volume. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's an open platform. Um, uh, like I said, it's going to be plug and play and lots of different integrations and stuff like that. And it's, it's branded separately from Run Sign Up to try to assure broad adoption. Um, and we, so, so Roger joined us uh, uh, about a year and a half ago. And, um, and Roger basically had an issue. So he has this wonderful PC product used by hundreds of timers. Um, I think we estimated like 11 million finishers a year are, 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 are scored with his software, right? But the problem is that you know, a PC product is certainly not the future of where timing is going, right? And, um, and so Roger didn't have the cloud and mobile expertise that we did. We didn't have all the scars on his back that he does. <laughs> um, and so we're combining kind of his knowledge. And then we've kind of, as, as we've you know, built up the race director business, you know, we've hired great people like Matt and Megan you know, that are, are real timers that are really adding to our total expertise here. And the idea is that we're going to build a new platform called Race Day Scoring. And Race Day Scoring is going to basically be the eventual follow-on to Race Director PC. Race Director PC will live for uh, a long, long time. But what we want to do is we want to offer uh, Timers Hughes uh, Race Director kind of a smooth path forward to the cloud and to mobile type technology. Um, the other point I want to make is that RaceJoy is going to be kept as a separate brand. We see that as a brand for, 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 for runners, for participants, right? for bikers, for triathletes. And um, that's going to be a tool that they use to find races, sign up for races, um, and then have a wonderful race day experience to share where they are in the course of their friends and family, to you know, receive uh, you know, uh, cheers and stuff like that when they're out on the course and, and so forth. But that technology of, of GPS gets tied in, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So, um, so, uh, <clears throat> so we've got a number of uh, new um, things. And I'm not going to do all these demos because we just don't have time. Um, but uh, on Monday, we released a, uh, a beta of the sign-up application. And the sign-up application has this associated with it. It's a swipe card reader. So this set of native kiosk apps is immediately available on Apple, Android, and web the way we've architected it. The other really cool thing is that it has basically an offline online mode. So it, it downloads the data and keeps it stored. And then if there's intermittent internet connection, it will, it will sync whenever it has that, that connection. The sign up app, what we've done is we've gone and, um, and done swipe integration. Swipe integration is harder than you might think because um, this is actually manufactured for run sign up. You cannot use a generic swipe machine on this application because it's not PCI compliant. Remember when Target got lost all those credit cards and stuff like that? The problem was that they weren't encrypting at this device. So this device actually encrypts at the device. So Kevin had to send, we had to create an encryption key. We had to break it into two pieces, send it in two separate 
um, tamper-proof envelopes via two separate carriers like FedEx and US Postal Service to two separate people at the company that manufactures this. Anyway, the only way, the only place that this can be unencrypted is on run signup servers. So I swipe the card here and, and it goes up to run signup servers and processes the transaction in a, in a secure way. Um, if you're interested in being a beta tester for this, we have some free ones of these. These cost us 50 bucks. What's gonna happen is that we're gonna put these up on Amazon for sale and we're going to um, split the cost with you. So we're gonna sell them for 25 bucks and we're gonna, we're gonna fund uh, 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 part, part of the cost. So, um, so that's, that's pretty interesting and is a really important part of the, of the race day um, kind of experience. And the cool thing is that you'll be able to use your tablets across these three different, you're gonna repurpose them depending on where the lines are and stuff like that because they're all kind of, kind of uh, you know, native. So um, we've talked about race director and we've talked about um, how uh, um, uh, scoring is gonna be the next generation. So race day scoring is going to have to evolve over a couple of periods. You do not replicate the amount of functionality that's in race director overnight. It's gonna take a couple of years. Um, and the architecture of race day scoring is gonna leverage some of the stuff we've done in mobile, in our mobile architecture. So the idea is that you'd be able to live in a disconnected type of a mode and do at least minimal type of scoring on just a tablet that's local at the, at the race. Um, and then whenever it syncs up, you do full-fledged scoring, full-fledged notifications, and, and, and all of that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, that's, that's really where we're going. You know, cloud and mobile type of scoring just has so many benefits to it in terms of cost, ease of use, um, you know, having centralized control, you know, if you're a large timer with six different teams out, you'll be able to really actually see what's happening in real time and control them and, and, and things like that. Um, uh, yeah, should be great. <laughs> um, so RaceJoy um, is, is really uh, kind of broken out this year. We've done full integration into run sign up. So you can define your map and run sign up. You can figure out if you want to if you want to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, pre-buy the RaceJoy for your for your users, and you can do promotions. You can, you know, upload your sponsor logos and your text messages and stuff like that. Um, and what we um, are introducing, also released this week, is um, is Run Sign Up Race Day results integration into RaceJoy. So um, what that means is that um, <clears throat> as soon as you, know, you upload results to run sign up, those results are going over to RaceJoy. And if I'm a RaceJoy user, then I'm seeing this mix of gun and uh, chip and, um, and GPS times all together. And so whenever they're available, I've got them. And I've got them there in my mobile app, right? And so um, James had uh, had this feature <clears throat> but he had done it himself in such a way that he needed to tie directly to the, the chip system uh, data. And that was a non-scalable way of doing this, right? And, and so he had to work closely with the timer and you know, get, it, get it all working and stuff like that. So an example is the Vermont, uh, Vermont City Marathon. And um, they used RaceJoy this year in James's original method of hooking into the timing data. Look at these numbers and they, they're, they're amazing. So there were 5,600 finishers. There were 8,200 users of RaceJoy. So, um, so that means that it got a lot of traction. Now Vermont City publicized it quite heavily and, um, and uh, but the runners knew that this was their, their source of data in an app. And the source of data gave them real-time data via GPS, which was not exact, but it was close enough. And it gave them um, real you know, results. Oh, I finished third in my age group and, and stuff like that. So, um, so it's, it's incredibly valuable. And then if you think about the number of transactions that are happening, like the number of interactions, the number of progress alerts, the number of finish alerts and stuff like that, the opportunity for sponsors is enormous. 
Um, and you know, this race had uh, People's United Bank and Burlington Telecom. Um, and you combine this with some of the other stuff that we're doing. Um, it, this platform is something that um, you know, we've got a number of, 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 of you that are using it. But if you haven't used it yet, you owe it to yourself to start using this and really start to think about this strategically um, across your races. <clears throat> so the other thing that we released yesterday is race day photos. And race day photos is a, it's, it's big. It's, 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 a, it's, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very, very good. Um, so the basic idea of race day photos is that you can upload photos and we will store them in the cloud for you, right? Now upon upload, what we do is we strip off data like um, on a on a on an image on a on a on a um, on a photo, you have like time of day associated there, um, and we strip that data off as as metadata, and that's kind of interesting because if the camera's at the finish line, we actually automatically align just like we do with video results. We actually automatically align the camera's time with the finish time, so you can show um, even if you don't get bib tagged. You can show, you know, like, um, uh, you know, close to me. So, say I finish in 22:30, I could look up, you know, 22:30 or other people around me, and I'll see that I'm near me, and I, you know, maybe hit page forward and back and find pictures of myself. The other cool thing that we do when we send it up is we do some uh, optimizing. So we create thumbnails, we create large images, uh, we create watermarks. Um, so right now the watermarks are really simple. We only take your race logo and we'll put it in the bottom left or the bottom right hand corner. Um, but the watermarking is going to get a lot more, uh, a, a, a lot, lot more better as Allison would make fun of me at. And, um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and um, you'll be able to um, have sponsors do watermarks, you know, and you'll be able to do metadata as watermarks. So you'd be able to put people's names, finish time, finish place, stuff like that, actually on the, on the photos. Um, so really cool stuff there. The other cool thing that we're doing, and this is available now in the beta, is every image that gets uploaded, we send to Google Vision. Google Vision actually reads the bib tags and, um, and we'll auto tag them. Now it's not 100%, right? But it, the idea is that it kind of seeds the tagging, right? And if you start to get people tagged and then social sharing starts to take place, then you could open up uh, potentially to your users crowdsourcing of the tagging, right? Um, the other thing that we will have that we don't have yet is Mechanical Turk tagging. Mechanical Turk is a service that basically you load a job into the cloud and somebody in Sri Lanka basically will, you know, tag photos for basically a penny a photo and stuff. So, um, so we'll give you that option. That will be for cost. Um, and then in terms of viewing, we have a number of different, you know, uh, viewing um, mechanisms to, to look at it and so forth. Um, but we also um, will give you text and email support. And the texting is really interesting. It's going to cost you money, but, um, but it's something you could probably get a sponsor to, to help fund. And the thing about texting is that if I get a photo as a text, then it becomes something that's really native in my phone that everybody's kind of used to. And then, you know, all my share buttons that I'm used to in my phone interface really work very, very well. And so you start to get this very wide adoption of, of, of that. Um, the other thing we've done is we've integrated in with, with uh, results. So if you're posting results in Run Sign Up, it's linking those based on bid number or the time. And so you click on a person's name, you're going to be able to see photos of that person and, and so forth. And it's also going to go into people's profiles. And um, so if you think of this thing a couple years down the line, or if you have photos from previous years, you can also upload those to this. Um, those photos are going to be associated with the people. And so if I run a race for five years, I'll have five years of my finished photo associated with this race and associated in my profile that I'll be able to do stuff with myself or the race will be able to use from a marketing perspective. So I'd be able to send an email marketing next year, a photo from last year and say, hey, come back in you know, 
try to get a better picture next time. Um, <laughs> on the payment side, right now everything is, is free um, because we're still in beta. But what we're going to do is we're going to give you a number of different options for how you take payments for this. So we'll give you increasingly um, more options on getting sponsors to pay for stuff. Eventually, we'll get to a point where you're going to be able to, um, to get like um, Metamucil as a sponsor for guys like me that are old and, and uh, Red Bull for the younger people. You'll be able to segment your users and stuff like that. Um, you'll be able to have, um, during registration, maybe say, hey, $10 to get um, access to full, you know, uh, full image quality downloads or something like that. Um, so we'll offer a number of different types of, uh, of payment mechanisms and, and, and so forth for you um, as well. Um, so really, you know, what we're trying to do is provide technology, like I said, um, you know, around these key, key, key areas here. You know, customers are looking for experiences. Uh, later today, uh, Jen Miller uh, from New York Times is going to talk and kind of give the user's perspective. She just wrote an article in the Times about, um, about she had run the New Jersey Marathon and how she spent $1,600 on that. So, uh, you know, between the hotel, the running shoes, the clothes, the, you know, like, it's more than just your race fee. These people that are signing up for your races are, like, they're looking for an experience. They're looking for something interesting and unique. And so, you know, increasing their race day stuff, we're trying to give them that. We're trying to give them something they can hold on to as a memory, you know, that photo and, and, and so forth. Um, and then, you know, kind of the other thing that's in here is that, that registration data that is kind of core to everything because it kind of helps tie everything together uh, between you and, and, and your customers, really. And um, the final thing is this you know, need for experts. So you can see there's a lot of technology here. We're trying to make it as easy as possible, but it's, in some ways, we're, we're treating you to like drinking from a fire hose, you know? Um, and, and, but you need to be the experts to see you know, how hard is it going to be to an individual race director that's running a, you know, trying to put together a PTA 5K in their town. All these tools, you know, we're after this idea of democratization through technology. And, you know, this idea that, you know, that PTA 5K with 200 people can have the same race experience as the Boston Marathon, that to me is pretty cool if we can, if we can bring that technology to them. But what we need is we need you know, people that help take that technology. And we think that there's a, there's a, a great market um, there for that. Um, so uh, summary, um, you know, we're committed to the running community and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we have a, a, a t-shirt wall. And so if you, haven't, if you didn't bring a t-shirt, you have to send me a t-shirt, right? And we'll send you a, a t-shirt in return. But this is a t-shirt that I got. It's a Santa Run ugly sweater t-shirt. Is this the most beautiful shirt that you've ever seen? Uh, it is just awesome. Um, so, so if you can beat this, that'd be great. But if you have a boring 5K shirt, I'll take that too. Um, huh? Hold that up. Um, I, I, and the, the other thing is, um, you guys have to help me. So you see this? This is our trophy. Um, um, it's the NCAA Final Four um, you know, March Madness uh, tournament. So we actually hold it uh, each year. And this past year, we opened it up to customers. And uh, not enough people really, uh, really did it because Andrew Burke wound up winning the employee as well as the customer one. So his name is up there twice, and I do not want that happening again next year. So, so uh, please, uh, please, please uh, help us out there. Um, that's all I've got. We've got a, uh, uh, oh, I rushed. I had a little more time. I thought I was done at 920. Um, does anybody have any questions? And if you don't, I'm going to do a couple demos for you. <laughs> Any questions? OK. Well, then you get a demo. <laughs> yeah.
You know, Roger says this every time, though, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't believe him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you're going to one-on-one session, you'll just meet them out in the lobby out here. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Johanna told me to say that. Actually, I don't know if Johanna's in here or not, but Johanna put this whole thing together, so how about another round of applause for Johanna? <laughs> so um, this is the back end. This is the race director uh, uh, side of, um, of uh, images. And um, you see here, you've got you know, these, these little images here. You'll see that um, I've not uh, tagged any of these hard-coded. These have all been tagged by Google uh, images. So you see the 807 on his bib. It read that, but didn't read the 535 behind him. It was a little bit too fuzzy to, uh, to read that. Um, so, um, so, so that's what it does. That's what the watermark looks like. Um, I did not have a transparent PNG for my little logo for the uh, Scott Coffee Run. Maybe Andrew um, Sigurd, you can get me one, and I'll put that up and make it look nicer. Um, but um, but that's kind of what the back end looks like. And obviously, if I wanted to tag another person, I could do 535 and just uh, add that uh, tag, and now it's tagged as well, right? Um, so uh, what happens um, uh, to get those images there is you upload the image. Um, so you come to the upload page. You choose what year. So this allows you to go to back years, uh, which is cool. Um, you can have different uh, locations. Um, and what you want to do is for each photographer, you want to have a different location. So if you have two finish line photographers, have two, um, two locations because the issue is that each of them, their cameras, will have different time of days, and you'll want to match that time of day to the, to the results. Um, so I'm going to, um, we did this test. Uh, uh, Ryan, who uh, wrote this, uh, actually brought his camera and did, took a bunch of pictures. I've uploaded some of them. I'll, I'll upload a few more here. Um, And you just click Upload All, and it uploads them. Um, we, it, it, the upload speed is really dependent upon you and your, and your own bandwidth. Um, we've tested at, on a server-to-server -server type of basis, uploading 100,000 photos, 100,000 three megabyte photos in an hour, and processing them. Um, so uh, that worked out um, really well. So it's a scalable platform. Um, you can search photos, and you can search for uh, tagged photos or untagged photos. You can search based on location and bid number and stuff like that. So we'll filter these photos. And um, the first page here, these were auto-tagged. This, I know, is a new one. Um, and this person was uh, uh, tagged. And you can tell it's new because it's still processing the large image. And that's why it took a little bit of time to display that large image. But she's wearing bib 707, and as, as if you can see, probably you can't in the back, but it says 707 is the bib number that was assigned to her. Um, we also have like an advanced mode, and the advanced, um, the advanced mode lets you um, kind of do tricky things like you know, automatically uh, expand it, you know, type in a bib number very quickly and hit next key and stuff like that. This is really built for you know, the Sri Lanka um, Mechanical Turk people, um, or if you have those types of people yourself, um, uh, you, can, you can do it yourself. Um, so that's the back end. Um, let's see. Um, the other piece of the back end is, I uh, don't oh know, that's the sign up app. Um, and then uh, this is the photos page. So as soon as you upload photos, a new um, tab appears on your menu for photos. Um, you can uh, type in 707, and you see how it, uh, it finds Abby. Um, you can also type in names like Abby, um, and there's the 707. Um, so you see that this, this image is tagged of her because it says 707. These other ones are near your finish, so it kind of figures out who is near that 707. Here she is 707. 
but here's like some people just before and just after her. So this gives you a nice way to kind of page through and, and, and find the people. Um, on the results side, um, the results are actually going to get um, uh, kind of redone. Uh, uh, here's part of the Race Day Go um, project. But you know, here we're going to uh, uh, search for Abby and click on her. There's her individual page. Eventually, this will have a picture of her on it and stuff like that. But right now, you have to click View Photos, and it takes you to her photo page. Um, so um, uh, pretty nice and quick and simple. Um, the idea of, of, of a photo platform basically being free and open, um, I think, is going to enable a lot of different business models. Some of you have like high quality um, photographers. And we're working with some of those guys to make sure that this meets their needs to integrate with their existing systems like Smug Mug or, or Titus to Marathon Photo and stuff like that. Um, but it also um, encourages this idea of like a crowdsourced, simple type of photo mechanism. So, you know, hire some high school kid or some, you know, college photojournalism major who's not going to get a job anyway and, you know, for a hundred bucks and, uh, and, and, you know, throw the kid a break and, and, you know, have them take a thousand photos and throw them up and it's kind of like you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Um, you don't have to spend any money and, and, you know, once we get all the social sharing stuff in, the, in here and the texting and stuff, it, it's just, you know, it can be very viral for your race and really provide um, some great, great value add. Um, any questions on the photo stuff? We're considering, We're considering data, data for two reasons. One is, one is that we haven't got a lot of outside, outside users, users on it. Um, um, you know, we, you know, we've, we've done testing with about, about um, half, half, half a million, million photos. photos. Um, um, and and, and uh, um, the other part, the other part is, is this, this system was designed, designed by, uh, by uh, Rich Friedman, which is which a friend of mine in the past. I've worked, I've worked with several, several companies, companies and, and been friends, been friends with them for 20 years, 20 years now. And, and uh, uh, Rich is Rich Rich a genius. genius. So if he says it works, it's going to work. work. <laughs> um, um, so so um, um, it's built on this beautiful architecture, this serverless architecture that should be infinitely scalable. Uh, so, uh, um, um, but the other reason why it's beta is that we don't have as many features as we want baked into it yet. We want to give you some payment options. Uh, we want to give you a few more viewing options um, and some other stuff. Um, but uh, uh, some social sharing and stuff like that. But, um, and maybe a couple of integrations like Smug Mug. Um, but once that stuff is done over the next month or so, month or two, um, and we, we intend to keep working on this. I, I, I think there's a ton of opportunity here. Um, we'll probably come up with something like we did for partner websites for photographer websites. Um, so a photographer could use this as their, as their base system. We haven't figured out the pricing for non-run sign-up races yet. Um, and we haven't figured out the pricing for Mechanical Turk and the texting uh, quite yet. But we'll figure those out over the next month or so. Yeah, Bill. What about like general pictures? Can you upload those too? You know, it's not a runner, you know, the event going. Yeah, yeah. It, it's actually one of our concerns. So like, obviously, the objective of this is for the endurance community and for races and stuff like that. Um, and one of the things we will probably be taking advantage of in Google Vision is trying to figure out inappropriate images. Um, but that's our only, you know, concern. Um, on that, but you know, if it, like I would think that you use it for you know like the a lot of things. Uh, eventually, we're going to have this be. You'll have the option to potentially uh, allow people to self uh, upload images. You know, think of tying this to race joy and stuff like that. Uh, there's some cool stuff that you could do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Picture from the helicopter of the finish line or something like that. Yeah. Anything. It's, it's just an image. The general pictures are, are in, in photos here. <clears throat> so you're going to have different locations. 
So you would have like, um, you know, race start finishes or pre-race finishes or, you know, hugging, hugging Mickey after the finish line pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So those would, in, in our parlance, those would be different locations. And, you know, so you'd see a bunch of, a bunch of templates here and you'd click on each one of those and you'd drill down. Or if they were all tagged, you'd be able to search a bid number and it would look across all the locations for you, you know, at the halfway point, the start line, the finish line, hugging Mickey afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? No, it's really it's really optimized for photos now, um, but obviously video is kind of a potential uh, next step. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's 9:30. It's after 9:30 now, so we'll cut it off. Um, so remember, in this room next is uh, Barbara Herzog uh, talking about um, donations and fundraising. And upstairs is Matt Avery talking about race day go and kiosks and check-in and stuff like that. Um, thanks a lot. <laughs>